The Japanese government has effectively brought the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant under state control. It has provided public funds to Tokyo Electric Power Company to bolster the company's finances. The injection of around $13 billion is in line with the rehabilitation program TEPCO created in May with a stake-backed uh, bailout fund. It's uh, supported to help the firm pay for the massive costs of compensating victims of the nuclear accident and scrapping damaged reactors. TEPCO president Naomi Hirose says the company will try and revitalize itself. He says it will also use the funds to secure a stable supply of energy. It's impossible to compare the time frame of this move with other companies that have had injections of public funds. State control is expected to last for quite some time. And TEPCO continues to face difficulties. It was recently forced to scale back a proposed hike in household electricity rates and is also being hit by rising fuel costs for non-nuclear thermal plants. A team from the International Atomic Energy Agency is trying to understand how a nuclear plant in northeastern Japan averted disaster. All three reactors at the Onagawa plant shut down when the earthquake hit on March 11th of last year, just as they were designed to do. IAEA experts investigated damage at Fukushima Daiichi two months later. Now they want to find out what was different at Onagawa. NHK World's Kaho Izumitani has more. Eighteen experts arrived at the plant in Miyagi Prefecture. They interviewed plant officials and Japanese nuclear regulators. The facility faces the Pacific Ocean, as does Fukushima Daiichi. The disaster knocked out power at the Fukushima plant and left it severely damaged. But the automatic shutdown and elevated position prevented major damage at Onagawa. The IAEA experts will examine what impact the quake had on its control and cooling systems, pipes and pools of nuclear fuel. They'll also inspect the breakwater around the plant. The experts hope to use their findings to strengthen the quake resistance of plants around the world. We hope the information we gather from here will help the world as a whole to look into their plants. The team will continue with their inspection into next week. The IAEA experts say this is a chance to learn yet more lessons from the disaster. They hope their visit will help them draw up more effective guidelines for nuclear safety. The operator of Fukushima Daiichi is trying to learn from the mistakes it made during last year's disaster. The accident lowered public confidence in Tokyo Electric Power Company. TEPCO workers struggled to gather and provide information. The utility held its first large-scale emergency drill since March 2011 in an effort to make improvements. About 300 people, including the firm's new managers, took part in the exercise. TEPCO officials based the drill on the assumption a magnitude 7.3 quake had struck beneath a Koto ward near Tokyo Bay. In this scenario, the tremor damaged power lines and substations. Utility officials practiced confirming the situation at local thermal power plants. They also calculated electricity supply forecasts after a possible suspension of power. They used a video conferencing system to simulate how they would monitor the impact on the utility's two nuclear plants in Fukushima Prefecture, northeast of Tokyo. Restoring public confidence is a big challenge. We have to review our old system of emergency crisis management. TEPCO spokespersons say the utility wants to repeatedly stage this kind of drill. Okay, well now talk about how the NRC is extrapolated from that uh, to evacuation orders if, there, if there's a meltdown. Well, they've, they've gone back on their original uh, study and, and decided that it's really not necessary to evacuate many people at all. Yeah, you know, that's been their goal for years. Um, uh, under one of their chairmen, I think it was Dale Klein, uh, his goal was to eliminate the evacuation plan completely. Uh, he's saying that these plants were so safe they didn't need an evacuation plan. And um, if that's true, I think that's just wonderful. 
If they don't need an evacuation plan, they don't need Price-Anderson insurance either. And if, if they, if they want to give up the Price-Anderson insurance, then we can gladly accept the fact that they don't need an evacuation plan. Of course, they won't do that. You know, the, the only reason these nuclear plants are operating is because they have, uh, you know, the public insurance, Price-Anderson nuclear insurance. Um, so they want the best of both worlds. They want uh, the, the public to insure the risk, and then at the same time they want to say, well, there is no risk, so therefore we don't have to plan for it. But, you know, Arnie, in the light of what's happened in Fukushima, it just takes my breath away. I, I, the, the stupidity, the wickedness of these people to say, you know, you don't really have to evacuate people if there's a meltdown. I mean, imagine Indian Point when it's melting down and, and, and you know, all the people in Westchester County and the sirens are going off and the people are in their cars in gridlock traffic trying to get to their children at daycare centres and their spouses and no one can get out and they're all breathing radioactive stuff from the air and s tasting metallic taste in their mouths and the... And the and the radioactive cloud is heading towards Manhattan, and the the tunnels are blocked, the bridges are blocked, no one can get out. You know, I mean, can you imagine? Well, if you look at all the assumptions that go into emergency planning, they they always assume it occurs on a nice day, and all the street lights work, and everybody behaves reasonably. And you know, for instance, they assume that you don't go to the daycare center to get your kids. You don't go to the high school or the middle school or the grammar school to get your kids. Buses will come. Believe it or not, bus drivers will volunteer to drive to get your kids out of a high radiation area. And the last thing the emergency plan counts on are, you know, 700 mothers in their minivans uh, descending upon their, their grammar school to personally evacuate their kids. Another example is uh, up at Seabrook, the emergency plan there. Uh, Seabrook has a, a beautiful public beach very near the plant. And um, on summer weekends, as many as uh, three or 400,000 people are on that beach. And there's only one bridge off. Well, what the NRC did in evaluating the emergency plan there is they flew an airplane down the beach and counted beach blankets on a cloudy Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, God. And, and based on that, they said, oh, we can evacuate this beach, no problem. So, you know, the, the secret's in the assumptions again. When you get realistic assumptions and assume that, oh, my God, this might be a tornado that causes the accident, and, oh, my God, none of the streetlights work, and, oh, by the way, mothers are likely to panic and go get their kids as opposed to drive in the other direction and wait for the school bus. Um, when you factor in all those human factors, in fact, the emergency plan doesn't work. The other thing that came out of the diet report, amazingly, was that 80% of the people didn't know that there had been a nuclear accident. Japanese ministers are working on streamlining some of their policies. They held a meeting on Monday to discuss a report that criticizes overlapping efforts to promote energy efficiency. It is July 31st, 2012. And we just had a little bit of rain here in eastern Ontario. It's 3 p.m. And there's my downspout. And let's see what my downspout's doing. Hot rain.
Chicago Electric Power Company has revealed that the March 11th damaged a critical nuclear fuel likely that the bell is trying to identify the cause. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. May also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. May also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. May also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. May also have been TEPCO says the drop in pressure is consistent with analysis that the piping system was damaged. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. They also have been damaged plant's most important safety features. Now, the utility has not yet found the cause of the stoppage. Speak that, 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 that